Hello and welcome back to my Megawine 2000 Turbo Edition video and audio card hardware series of videos. So in this video I'm going to be showing you the differences between the old sprites board on the right and the new sprites board on the left that was just delivered by PCBWay. The sprites board on the left, even though it has more functionality, is actually smaller because as you can see it's using a lot of surface mount technology chips rather than the board on the right which uses an awful lot of through hole technology chips. Both of these are 5 volt 74 series LS chips. You might notice some differences where the board on the left does not use resistors and the board on the right is using a whole series of resistors. Now these resistors are weak pull up resistors. They are there to produce a binary 1111111 signal which is basically FF in hex so that when the pixel color is read from the scan rams on the first half of the clock when it's displaying the pixel data it then uses the other half of the clock to then write a, a, an FF value to the ram and it's the same kind of logic here these resistors on the right hand board produce a weakly pulled up uh, F signal, which is 1111 in binary, to make the sprite comparison logic produce a full height sprite. Now, the board on the left does not have that because it uses entirely digital logic. The reason why I removed the resistors is that the weak pull up resistors were generating strange artifacts depending on the type of IC that I was using. The board on the left also uses the clock oscillator. Now the clock oscillator is there to use a faster clock for calculating the sprite data into the scanline rams in the first place. So when the scanline rams are outputting their pixels they use the video clock and then when they're calculating data they use the higher clock rate. Now this means that the sprite board on the left will generate more sprites compared to the sprite board on the right. Well, that's the theory. Anyway, it works in simulation. I have yet to test this. The sprite board on the left also uses more precise address matching compared to the sprite board on the right. The sprite board on the left, up in the top left hand corner, also has a recessed bank selection header compared to on the right where the sprite board has a bank selection header. So this oscillator here can be chosen with this two banked dip switch here. It's either using the video clock or the oscillator clock and I've already set that up to use the oscillator clock so when I plug it in this board should be generating a higher number of sprites compared to the board on the right. The quality of the soldering by PCBWay is lovely and neat. These tiny little surface mount chips really do cram the board quite well. So this dip switch here is for the address selection logic. Now the board on the left has 256 combinations, basically 8 bits, instead of the board on the right which just selects one of the high bits for the address line for its sprite data. So the board on the right has a lot of basically collisions up in the higher banks of memory with the other boards. Now this was an initial design decision to try and reduce the complexity of the address decoding but it reduces the amount of addresses that can be actually be used independently from other boards. This new board has complete independence in terms of the high memory address mapping. So what this means is that this board on the left, and I'm going to improve the other boards that include this more accurate address matching, it means that the board on the left can have complete address independence from the other boards. It means that there's less memory collision. It means that the memory address range has been greatly expanded. So I can have multiple boards plugged in and they do not collide with each other in terms of the memory map. The board on the left is also significantly lighter compared to the board on the right. The surface mount chips are a lot lighter. The, the through hole chips are relatively quite heavy. So this is the board plugged in and with the old demo and I can see that it's rendering all of the sprites as expected. You know, this demonstration hasn't been changed to in increase the number of sprites it wants to output. So let's change the code and see if the new board will render more sprites as expected. Note that there are 
three sprites. One of them is moving vertically up the screen, but there are three sprites up at the top, and then there's a whole collection of sprites down at the bottom before the boss. The three sprites up at the top are actually 32 by 32 pixel sprites, so they use 2 by 2, 16 by 16 sprites, so four sprites in total. So this is emulation. In the emulation, I have actually added seven extra bullet sprites. You can see five bullet sprites there, and then there's one going down and one going horizontally to the right. So this is the emulation where I emulated the faster scanline clock for calculating sprites. And then the physical hardware also performs as I designed, as I expected in the emulation and also in, in the hardware simulation tests that I've been running. So we can see here that we have seven extra sprites. Now, even though the bullets are quite small, they're still using the full 16 by 16 pixel sprite size. Now on this board stack currently at the moment, I have the APU plugged in there on the left hand edge of the board stack. Now the APU, the advanced processing unit, allows me to precisely time uh, video and audio hardware updates in terms of screen position. So this code uses uh, a split, if you like, in the middle of the screen, approximately, to update the sprite registers for the top and then down at the bottom it updates the sprite registers again, basically duplicating the or increasing the number of sprites that are available that can be seen. And the real hardware operates in the same way. So now I've got a very much increased number of sprites that you can see here being used on the hardware. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven larger sprites and all of the bullets and then the boss down at the bottom has actually been moved up so you can see the full boss sprite there moving to the right rather than half of it being moved off the bottom of the screen. So the new hardware along with the APU vastly increases the number of sprites that are visible and the trusty old Commodore 64 is running all of this extra code so it's running all of the code to update all of the extra sprites and it's sending the information to the APU board, the Advanced Processing Unit board, to then do all of the fast memory copies to the video hardware timed with the scan of the video hardware as it goes down the screen. Remember that the screen is scanned from left to right, from top to bottom, 60 times a second. So this is fantastic. It means that the new hardware works really well with Commodore 64 and it works really well with the rest of the board stack. I'm very pleased with this new hardware. I'm very pleased to see it works first time. And thank you very much to PCBWay for delivering a very neat, fully functional board without any issues. If you like these crazy electronics kind of videos or either retro games computing for the Commodore 64 games, then please do consider liking or subscribing to this channel. And there are buttons down below specifically for that purpose. That would be great, wicked, fantastic, wonderful. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and have a great day wherever you are.